In this recording, we're going to take a look at how to configure dynamic client registration uh, as well as management in the Curity Identity Server. This starts with uh, enabling dynamic client registration in the token service. So we'll go to token service and dynamic registration here. Make sure that enable DCR is switched on. In this recording, we're going to look at templatized dynamic client registration. So that's enabled. There's also the option to do non-templatized client registration, which is described in another uh, resource article. I'm also going to review how we can handle DCR management, uh, specifically deleting a client here later on. So I'm going to enable DCR management. And then we get the option to choose what clients that um, are allowed to fully manage dynamically registered clients. So I'm going to pick my dynamic client template here for that purpose. Now that DCR is enabled, we can go in here and look at my dynamic client template that I have. So I have the code flow capability and the OpenID scope enabled. I'm going to add appropriate redirect URIs here for OAuth tools that I'm going to use later to showcase this. Make sure that the dynamic client registration template is enabled here. I have options for registration authentication methods. I'm going to use user must authenticate. And with that, we need to select a client that handles that authentication. And I have a www client there. The client authentication method, I'm going to set the secret. So we have a secret and password there. I'm not going to select a user authentication and we commit the changes. Next, we need to configure a dynamic client registration endpoint. So in the endpoint section here, we can choose new endpoint and we'll give it a name, client registration, a path, client registration, and then we can Select the type from the drop down here. We can start typing dynamic. And there's our endpoint. So you can see now it's not deployed. So I want to deploy this to my default server role here and submit that. Now it's fully done and we can commit these changes as well. Now we can switch to OAuth tools to take a look at how this works. So by enabling DCR um, and requesting the DCR scope here, we can run an initial code flow to obtain an initial access token. This is the access token that we need in order to register a client. So we now have an access token and I can here make an API call to the client registration endpoint that we just uh, created. It's a post. I can here pick out my initial access token that I was just, um, that I just obtained. Um, we configure this API call uh, specifically we are sending in the software ID um, key with the dynamic cl client template value and by running that post command we get a response from the QD identity server here and we can see that um, we get a client ID back this is our dynamic client ID and we also get a client secret back this is the secret for that specific client so we have now registered a dynamic client to test this, we can go back into a new code flow and we use this dynamic client ID. And then we also need to copy the secret that was provided to us. 
as you can see now, we are uh, requesting the open ID scope and not the DCR scope. The DCR is just for getting an access token to the initial registration. Here we authenticate and now I get an access token, a refresh token, and my ID token um, because of the open ID scope. So I now successfully used the dynamically registered client and secret to run through um, the code flow. If I run this again, I'm enforcing authentication here, so no SSO. Now I use the same client, the same secret, I get a new access token. So this now works as um, essentially a normal statically defined client. So dynamic client registration management, when enabled, gives also a registration client URI in the response when we registered the client. If we use this, there's several different commands that can be done. I'm going to showcase one here where we're going to delete the dynamically registered client. Um, I need the registration access token in order to do this. So this is a regular API call to the given endpoint with a delete and then I have to give it the access token I was given as a response when I registered the client. This will give us an empty response body, but the API call executes. If we now try to use this client to get an access token, we get a bad request because this, cl this client, dynamically registered client, the dynamic client doesn't exist anymore. And, and therefore, it's not possible to obviously obtain an access token or any other tokens from that client. Furthermore, if we try to register the client again here yeah. using our initial access token, that also fails with a 401. And that's because this initial access token provided to us when we, when we give the DCR scope is, um, is it an access token that can only be used uh, once. So as soon as it's been used, which we already did, uh, it, it will no longer work. You would have to obtain a new initial access token and then register the client again, which is obviously going to be a, a new client then. So that's how dynamic client registration works in Curity and how you enable it, um, as well as a, a brief look at how we can handle uh, management of dynamically registered clients. And in this example, we deleted the, the dynamic client. Thanks for watching.